ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're doing another CPU showdown featuring the Ryzen 7 1700X going up against the Broadwell E i7 6800K. So another Ryzen vs Broadwell E showdown. I thought this one would be very interesting because uh, the 6800K is a very popular CPU. So my methodology for this one has changed. If you watch my previous showdown, the 1800X versus the 6900K, I tried to make it as apples to apples as possible. Same memory speed, same CPU speed, um, they're running the same GPU at the same speed, just really made it as um, similar as possible, the two CPUs, uh, to really see the differences there in terms of IPC. This one I've done a different, I've gone into it with a different idea. And that idea is that most people are going to obviously take their CPU as high as they can overclocking wise and take their memory as high as they can overclocking wise. And that's how we'll start this video. So the 1700X I had um, overclocked the exact same as the 1800X. It went to 4 gigahertz on all 8 cores and it just couldn't go higher. Couldn't go to 4.1 no matter what I did. Uh, the memory also would only say at 2133 megahertz for some reason I just couldn't get it to go higher that may be um, some sort of motherboard issue I was running into but that was the case I could take it higher but I had to uh, uh, slow the memory uh, the CPU speed down and that you know it didn't work out favorable for the uh, CPU the obviously having the extra speed there was more beneficial than having the memory speed now the 6800K, I managed to get up to 4.2 gigahertz. I tried for 4.3 and it just wasn't having it. Um, but yeah, at 4.2 it was um, just fine. And uh, memory wise, I managed to take my uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum up to 2800 megahertz. So uh, 200 megahertz more for the 6800K and obviously quite a bit more uh, memory speed there. Now for the people out there already screaming, well this is gonna be really unfair, Kevin you're so biased Intel, or whatever else you wanna spout out about me. No, this is realistic. Who realistically is not gonna try get the most out of their CPU and the most out of their memory? And of course the GPU and other things. But the GPU remain the same in that, the GPU speeds remain the same, we're just purely looking at the CPUs. So that's how I've done it this time, and I think it is the most realistic way uh, to approach this. Now let's talk about the rigs they're going into. So the Ryzen rig featured the Aorus Gaming 5 motherboard. Um, very, very, very solid there. Great power supply, platinum um, grade uh, AX760i power supply, and the cooler was the Deep Cool cooler. There was no throttling, so don't worry guys. Um, temps wise, there's no throttling whatsoever coming from that Ryzen CPU. It was sitting in the high 60s. Um, so that wasn't an issue at all. The Broadwell E-Rig is actually my personal rig you see behind me and obviously it's running the X99A Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard which is uh, very solid, also very good specs. They're, running, they're both running the same GPU, the uh, Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 1080. So everything's the same except for the CPUs and uh, the uh, memory speeds but they're both running the exact same memory. Now a question I got uh, that I'll answer quickly is did disabling SMT uh, help with overclocking? And I can only speak for myself and my own testing, but it didn't for me. Maybe other people it might, but for me it didn't make any difference whatsoever to the overclocking. Now we're going to jump into the benchmarks, and this one's going to be a bit different because I'm going to show you three different types. Of course we're going to have the 6800K at its 4.2 gigahertz. We'll have the 1700X at uh, 4 gigahertz. That, that it was a 4.2 on all six as well on this guy, and uh, the 1700X at 4 gigahertz with SMT disabled. So you'll see the three of them. These are done. Uh, did this in productivity and uh, all the games, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So let's jump straight into it.
So what can we gather from those benchmarks? So the uh, 1700X wins big time in productivity. Oh, it just blows the 6800 away. So on that side of things, huge win there for the uh, 1700X. In gaming, you see the 6800K um, starts to pull back, and that's that's really good. Pull back the lead, I mean. Um, and it pretty much defeated uh, the 1700X and everything. With SMT disabled, you did see though that it got quite a bit closer there. So obviously there's a lot still to be done in terms of Windows optimizations and other things like that that plenty of people have um, spoken about with the Ryzen chip. And obviously we will see that performance get better. So uh, quite interesting there, but that, got, that should give you an idea of the different um, performance numbers I'm getting out of them. Now I have heard a lot of people tell me, Kevin, it's pointless you doing Ryzen testing now. Obviously it's got to, you know, there's got to be fixes done, there's going to be updates done, it's going to get way better. I understand that guys and other you know um, tech YouTubers have called people out like me for doing my Ryzen testing now where others have waited. Well people are asking me to do it and I try to run quite a reactive channel. This is how it is right now and it was sort of like you know the same thing when X99 launched um, that uh, with Haswell E that a lot of people were telling me the same thing. Why don't you give it some time? It's not like I'm going to do these showdowns and never do them again. I will do more CPU showdowns in the next few months and I will be re retesting a lot of these CPUs to see what advancements have been made. But as of right now, these are the results I'm getting and people are looking to buy Ryzen CPUs right now so that is the... Um, well, these are the numbers that you're going to be getting as of right now. So that's basically all I'm going to say on that topic. Which brings me now to the conclusion. So let's bring price into the equation. So at Playtech right now you can pick up a 1700X for uh, 600 bucks, 599. The 6800K on the other hand goes for $720. So a good $120 more. And uh, so which one do I say is better? I'm going to break this into three types of people and then you yourself can judge which you know obviously which one applies to you the first is the gamer or the person who's mainly doing gaming uh, 90 percent of the time they're doing gaming maybe they do a little bit of productivity but um, only you know a little bit casually but everything else is just gaming for those people um, out of these two CPUs the 1700x and the 6800k as of right now you have to go for the 6800k but if we open that up to all CPUs on the market right now, I would go with uh, something like the 6600K if you can get your hands on it, or the 7600K if you can get your hands on it, because after looking at different people's benchmarks, that one will give you the most solid gaming um, performance right now in terms of performance per dollar. That may change in the future, but as of right now, that's what it looks like and the vast majority of people out there game at 1080p or lower and for those people the 7600k will be more than enough um, that will be a very very solid CPU the second person is a person like me who they define as creators who game people that do like 50% productivity and 50% gaming streamers, video editors, all the different things you might be doing on the PC, but you're sort of that, that mixed person. For that person, definitely go for the Ryzen. 100% go for the Ryzen. The productivity scores are so good that it uh, makes up, in my mind anyway, for um, some of the lack of performance at 1080p, which probably will get corrected in the future. But if you're a uh, creator who's, uh, or someone, you know, that's doing things, you're going to, like that, like video editing and picture editing that, you're most likely going to be running a high resolution display to begin with. You're more likely to be the person running the 1440p display or the 4K display. And you see in that, the performance difference gets narrowed dramatically um, between Broadwell E and the Ryzen chip. So yeah, definitely go for Ryzen then. And if you're someone just straight up doing productivity straight up workstation then yeah 100% um, go for Ryzen without a shadow of a doubt go for Ryzen those are very very good scores uh, for the Ryzen CPUs now on that front which one do I recommend so I still haven't been able to test the 1700 um, but more or less all three of them are the same 
and I've spoken to lots of different people who have tested all three and guys just get the 1700 and overclock it a lot of these people are getting the same overclock and they're all three are going up to four gigahertz so why would you spend the extra money and get the 1800x or in fact the 1700x you guys want to be picking up that 1700 and then overclocking it up to four gigahertz on all eight and that'll be a phenomenal CPU in terms of price to performance absolutely epic so yeah, that's basically how I'm going to uh, round out this video. I, I try to show my videos um, as best I can in terms of showing you guys the numbers and then giving my interpretation of those numbers and then my opinion based on those numbers and based on other people I've spoken to. So I really try my best to bring you guys the most unbiased um, straight up content that I possibly can and it really hurts my feelings when people say I'm bought out by AMD or I'm bought out by Intel I've never been paid a single dollar in my life the whole time I've done this channel from a tech company the only company that's ever paid me is Playtech for running their channel Playtech TV <laughs> that's a whole different situation that's running a YouTube channel for a company obviously and they're a retail obviously they would pay me for my time doing that but I've never been paid from any of these other companies and it's just crazy to see people accusing me of such a thing even though they have absolutely zero evidence to prove that and I can tell you guys without a shadow of a doubt that I have never accepted money from any single tech company and I never ever will so just really take that into consideration I'm really telling you guys that is 100% the truth and you can ask any other tech youtuber I've ever spoken to and uh, they will tell you the exact same thing now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel Tech Showdown if you like this content and you want to see more of it because it really does help me and I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.